Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and today I'd like to talk to you about center of mass. Our objectives include identifying by inspection the center of mass of a symmetrical object, locating the center of mass of a system consisting of two such objects, utilizing center of mass of a two object system to analyze the motion of a system, and creating and utilizing both mathematical and graphical models to analyze the relationships between acceleration, velocity, and position of the center of mass of a system. So let's dive in by talking about what is center of mass. Real objects are more complex than simple objects. So far we've been talking about point particles, one little tiny point that has a bunch of mass, but the real world doesn't work that way. Thankfully, if we use the right mathematical model, we can treat a more complex object as if all of its mass was centered at a single point. Then we can treat it as a point particle. It makes the math much, much, much simpler. The center of mass, then, is the weighted average of the location of mass in an object. So how do you find center of mass? Well, for uniform density objects, center of mass is the geometric center. Think of a sphere of uniform density. The center of mass, of course, is in the center of the sphere. For objects with multiple parts, find the center of mass of each part and then treat those as a system of point particles. Find the center of mass of that system of point particles and you're all set. For irregular objects, though, we can find the center of mass empirically, hang it from different points, and drop a line down the center, a plumb line, where all these lines cross as you hang it from different points, that's going to be your center of mass. So let's take a look at a sample problem. Find the center of mass of the object shown below. The density of the object is uniform. Well, since it's symmetric and it has uniform density, by inspection we can see that the center of mass should be right there in the center. Taking a look at something slightly more complex, we could find the set, calculate center of mass for a system of particles. The position vector for the center of mass is equal to the sum of the mass times the position divided by the total mass. So the x coordinate of the center of mass would be mass 1 for the first particle times its x position plus the second mass, mass of the second point particle times its x, posi x position plus however many more you have. Do the same thing and divide by the sum of all the masses, or the total mass. In the same fashion, we could write the formula for the y-coordinate of the center of mass of a system of point particles. That would just be your first mass times its y-coordinate, plus your second mass times its y-coordinate, and so on for however many particles you have, divided by the total mass. And I'm going to write that now as capital M, which is just the sum of all those individual point particle masses. Let's put that to use and try it out in this problem, where we're trying to find the center of mass of an object modeled as two separate masses on the x-axis. The first mass is 2 kilograms at a position of 2, and the second mass is 6 kilograms at a position of 8. Well, by inspection, we of course can see that the y-coordinate for the center of mass is going to be 0. It's going to be right on this line, somewhere between the two. And we could probably guess that it's probably going to be closer to the 6 kilogram mass, just using inspection. But let's calculate it specifically. The x-coordinate of the center of mass is going to be our first mass times its x-coordinate, plus our second mass times its x-coordinate, divided by the total mass of the system. So our first mass is 2 kilograms with an x-coordinate of 2, and our second mass is 6 kilograms with an x-coordinate of 8, and we're going to divide by the total mass, 8 kilograms. So we have 6 times 8, 48, 52 over 8, which is just going to be 6.5. So we could treat this entire thing as if we had a, an 8 kilogram mass located at 6.5. Let's take a look at what we would do if we had a more complex object. Find the center of mass of the combination object shown below. The density of the object is uniform. Well, given that the density of the object is uniform, first off, by inspection, we can probably see that the x-coordinate of the center of mass is going to be right on that y-axis. The x-coordinate is going to be 0, so we don't even have to calculate that. The y-coordinate, though, is going to take a little bit of thinking. We'll take the center of mass of this object and treat that as one point particle in the center of mass of our second object and treat that as a point particle. Now we can find the y-coordinate of the center of mass equal to the first point particle mass times its y-position plus the second point particle mass times its y-position divided by the total mass, capital M. 
So that will be our first mass, three kilograms, with the y coordinate of zero, plus our second object, six kilograms, times its y coordinate, center of mass, three, divided by our total mass, nine kilograms. So three times zero is zero, six times three is 18 divided by nine. Our y coordinate must be two. So we could treat this entire object as if it had a mass of nine kilograms here at the point zero comma two. Let's take a look at a problem where we have to find both the x and the y coordinate of the center of mass. Here we have three point particles. Find the coordinates of the center of mass for the system shown below. Well, let's find the x coordinate first. The x coordinate of the center of mass is going to be our first mass times its x coordinate, three kilograms times one, plus our second mass, four kilograms times its x coordinate, five, plus our third mass, one kilogram times its x coordinate, seven, all divided by our total mass, three plus four plus one, eight. So we have 2730 over eight, or 3.75 for the x coordinate of our center of mass. Now let's find the y coordinate of the center of mass. The y coordinate we find the same way. Mass one, three kilograms times its y coordinate, two, plus our second mass, four kilograms, times its y-coordinate, three, and our third mass, one kilogram, times its y-coordinate, one, six plus 12, 18 plus one, 19, divided by the total mass, eight, is going to give us a y-coordinate value of about 2.38. So we could treat this entire thing as if it had a total mass of eight kilograms located at the position 3.75 comma 2.38. There it is. Well, before we sign off, let's talk very briefly about center of gravity and what the difference is between center of gravity and center of mass. We've already defined center of mass. Center of gravity refers to the location at which the force of gravity acts upon an object as if it were a point particle with all its mass focused at that point. So the key point here is that has to do with the force of gravity and how it acts on that object. In a uniform gravitational field, which is usually what we're dealing with, center of gravity and center of mass are going to be the same. But if you have a non-uniform gravitational field, you can't make that assumption. They may be different. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on center of mass. If you need more help looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everybody, and make it a great day.